This is going to be a video loosely centered around discussing three things. Form. Let's write it down. It's not a whiteboard, but close to it. Form. Function. And structure. There we go. And those are three things that I think I could make a case that often we just confuse when we're drawing. We don't separate them out and think of them separately. And um, they all play a role. And first of all, someone out there in internet, YouTube land might be thinking, he's always talking about thinking, but we're, we want to do drawing. We want to draw. We want to get out there and draw. And I understand that. There's a natural tendency to just kind of zoom ahead and want to just draw, draw, draw and have lots of fun. But I think that if you look at the really good artists that are out there, they have a secret. And the secret is that they're thinking while they're drawing. They have a certain kind of thinking. <clears throat> they have a certain kind of thinking that informs the drawing. So the hand is drawing but the mind is thinking, and I suppose the emotions are emoting, because you can have emotions about something and put them into your drawing, for sure. I mean, that's the whole point. It's communication. But I think um, too often we can go into just blindly kind of drawing. And I would say that often what people do is they just do this. They think about form. Or they may not even think about form. They might think about shapes and lines depending on the kind of artist they are, because some artists are much more form-based. That's 3D. Some are, seem to be more centered in shapes when you get flatter. And some are very line-oriented, decorative. And it's not necessarily a value judgment. It's just that they're different styles. But if you're, if you're drawing three-dimensionally, like I've talked about, and you're drawing like solid structures, you're thinking about all three at once. So the, those are shapes. Got three shapes there. Let's put some lines on this. I got three shapes. It implies a form, a cube, or a cubic form. And um, we got the form, we got shapes, and we got lines. So I think often what people do is they just draw a form. They don't think about function and structure. So, I mean, they're all challenging, but they're all interrelated. And, and I guess a lot of this talk is going to connect to what I've done a lot of is drawing backgrounds and designing stuff. So you have to get into these concepts of function and structure if you're designing backgrounds. If you're designing, say, a human, I think a lot of that is more implied because people know you know, the, the basics of a, of a humanoid body. But if you're getting into other environments and locations, you've got to think about function and structure. So, um, so form is just the raw form. You might have like a cube. You could have endless ones. You could have cylindrical. My hand's wobbling. That's off, but anyway, we'll see. I haven't really warmed up. I just went into this cold. Um, that would be like a cylindrical type form. And you could have variations of that, you know. So you've chopped it in a, if I was drawing it transparently, it would be like that. You know, like a sliced and endlessly, you could chop this up and get into these type of forms. But what's my point here? My point is these are just raw forms, which you should get good at drawing if you want solidity in your drawing. And I'm not even putting much perspective or convergence in it, which would mean this is convergence when things are going to a vanishing point. 
right? They're converging at varying rates. So that's when you get into more perspective. But here I'm just thinking about raw forms. And, um, but again, these are what I'm getting into as relates to thinking about what you're drawing is none of these really have structure. So what's structure and function? They're, they're all interrelated. It's a little tricky to describe this all because they all exist at once. But um, structure would be the, a bunch of elements in an arrangement that usually have some kind of function. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to use a simple example. Uh, like say, I got a different, different marker here. Um, say a car, okay? Let's think about a car. Let's make this super simple. I'm going to draw this kind of diagrammatically too. This is not like going to be an elegant drawing of a car, but at least as regards a modern car, I'm drawing it very form-like on purpose so we don't forget about form. And it's almost like a kid drawing, so I think you'll forgive me. But my point is to activate the thinking and actually not worry too much about fancy drawing. So on a modern car, you've got a basic arrangement, right? It's got parts. Let's go this way. It's a four-door car. And I'm going to add in more as I go. But you can see that you have a basic, it's evolved this way. You know, they had early designs of cars that were very different, but it eventually they settled on four wheels. It's stable, usually engine at the front, although you can get engine at the back. You've got the hood where you can open it. There's some kind of opener at the front, usually there. And there's endless variations in all of these things. My point is to get people thinking about structure and function. So structure is the arrangement of the pieces, like these are the rear view mirrors, and then there's a third mirror here, the side mirrors, and a rear view mirror inside there. And uh, the arrangement dictates, is, or and is connected to the structure and the function, like they put them at the sides here, because somewhere here, right? So you can see from where you're driving out the back. And then you have lights here, usually, like this. You have an intake here at the front for the rad for air for the engine. Usually you have a bumper of some kind. You have a license plate, usually for registration, that's government stuff. And then you've got, like I already said, the wheels, they have their own structure and function and form. And uh, you have the doors with the handles. You've got, usually on this plane here, you've got glass, of course, so people can see out because they want light. This is usually opaque and solid because it's protective. And uh, usually you don't need to see straight up. And if you made this glass, which I mean, you can have a sunroof that could open on some cars or a convertible, but uh, you've, you've got that to let in light, but it might get too hot if you had a glass top car the whole time in a hotter environment. So that's kind of like the basic arrangement. And you have structural and functional elements. The hood would have hinges that you can't see. Sometimes even on a, you know, a, what is it, a turbocharged or supercharged car, you might have an extra intake. They all give a different feeling. You've got a, usually a gas tank opener somewhere back there. Uh, you got rear bumper and so on. And if it was a delivery vehicle, it might have branding like a number on it or, you know, a race car. All of those things imply different uh, purposes, functions. So you can use kind of all this stuff when you design because often again people just think like they kind of just think loosely about structure and function. They, they think more about form but they don't interconnect them. Um, so I'm trying to think of where ne next to go with this. Um, say you're designing a door. Let's do a door. This is like a classic thing you might draw. If you want to give a character, you're going to be thinking about the different elements. I'm kind of just going to make this up on the fly. And um, you could have the door. The door might have a frame. So is it wood? I don't know. Is this metal? I'm just really making this up on the fly. Let's say 
this door. I like things with character. And I see things like this when I walk around. Try and look at the environment you're in because everything is a story. It's got a story if you look at stuff carefully. So here uh, I started saying we've got a door. It could be any kind of different door. But this door they've tacked on some metal here. And then uh, this is like the inside and I'm drawing it from a certain perspective and I'm trying to think ahead. So we got a handle here. Each of these things could be endlessly varied. And uh, this might be like wood, so if I'm cartooning, I might sort of imply wood. Now you need a handle, because that gets into function, structure and function. It's got to open, right? you got to pull on it. I mean, if there's no handle, if the handle's broken, that tells you a different story. Somebody hasn't been repairing that door, and you can't get in. Um, now we've got some kind of window here. And again, maybe there's a surround on it of metal oops haven't warmed up enough oh well let's let's go with that it's kind of broken corroded it's rusted so let's put some uh, wire mesh that implies security which you see on some doors they don't want the glass broken the glass did get broken. See, this is broken here behind it. But then they put the mesh on. They didn't want any further break-ins. People were kicking the door. So you can see on some doors, they added steel plates. It's a high, uh, high traffic door and they bolted on metal. Somebody, uh, maybe this is like a club or a high traffic area. They stuck on various posters and things, and then they got torn off. These are kind of things I've used a lot of times, but they're all, they're all based on things you can see in real life. And you might have lettering left over, you know, some kind of ad, exclamation mark, whatever. Um, so I've drawn this wrong here a bit, but anyway, it looks like there's a gap down there. That's fine, I'll go with it. Some kind of step here. All right, and I'll make it like that, and maybe some concrete. See, everything has a story if you look carefully, and it tells you something, like if you add weeds, then it's untended, you know? Nobody's bothered to trim. It's a little bit forgotten, maybe, depending on what else you add. And maybe we've got something here, for example, uh, some kind of corrugated metal. And this is like a side piece that's been added to brace it. And it would probably have an angle on it to help hold it up. And that itself has been bolted on her with some big screws here into the so um, I've drawn this a little bit crappily, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Self-critic. I would draw this more carefully if I was really drawing it, but anyway, I think you get the idea. The idea is that you're trying to put character into it. And I'm following the perspective loosely here. It's not quite right, but anyway. Every different thing implies a different choice in whoever built this, different availability of materials, and um, things, things like this that are kind of quirkier and eccentric have a lot more interest to them. But if you draw something much too, just too mechanically, like a grid, it's just boring. It has no appeal or life, because it's, it's like with people. People's faces reflect their character, and so do environments, and, and the different choices that people have, the things they wear, the way they stand, the way they talk, the way they move. Um, I'm going to continue on here. This, this, uh, say we've got uh, some kind of wiring box here. 
and there's a wire that's coming down here. Got fasteners. And it's going somewhere. It's going to some destination that we don't know, but it implies a function. It's been run. Somebody ran this wire. This is like the side of the doorway. Somebody ran that for some reason. We don't know why. Maybe there's a basement window here right beside. And we'll go like this. And they tried to grade it a bit so that the water would run away. There's a crack there for these weeds. And there's some grill bars here. They don't want break-ins. There's some kind of maybe stucco on this part. This is actually different talk than what I originally started wanting to talk about, but I think it still relates. Um, it's about form, structure, and function. I'm drawing the 3D forms here, but I'm also thinking about structure and function. So here I'm going to add, so this, is, this would be like stucco. I'm going to make this like bricks. And I've got my brick pattern here. I'm not drawing everyone in exactly perfectly because on purpose it's kind of like it makes it too mechanical and it kind of kills the interest if you have it that predictable and in real life things get broken up and varied so i could go on with this but i think you get the idea um you're thinking about structure function and i didn't even add like oh no i do have to add that i need a light okay so i've used up my possibilities here i'm gonna have to do that they went, oh my gosh, we didn't add a light, so they're going to add a light later. They already built this. Like I said, everything tells a story. So they went like this, and they got something stronger. It's braced by a wire or more metal here so that it doesn't fall over. And then they created some kind of metal... bulb. There's a bulb there and there's a kind of metal. They projected it out so that it can, the light can hit the doorway past this roof. Not really very optimal. You wouldn't want to do that. You'd probably do it the other way around, put the light underneath. But like I say, that's thinking about structure, uh, function, and storytelling. Because on more amateur or home-built type locations, you're going to see things like this, you know, in a slum setting or whatever amateur thing where it hasn't been worked out and where things have been added in on top of other things, you see this kind of funky, interesting stuff that happens. Of course, the internet's a gold mine for researching this kind of stuff. Um, all right, I think that's probably good. I was going to talk about one thing quickly. I'll see if I can add this in. Yeah, fire escapes. So when I did this movie, Robot Dreams, designing backgrounds for it. I had to think about um, drawing lots of New York City fire escapes. So I'm going to quickly talk about that. And it's an example of something that people often draw these funky, bizarre things, but they don't think about the structure and function. So a fire escape has a structure. I'll show that to you quickly. So it's probably a little short here, but anyway, they... What they did is they made a series of platforms. And these are just two, but of course there can be many. And they added these to buildings so that people could escape, right, if there's a fire. And uh, they added them to the outside, but they didn't want them to be heavy. So this is not going to be a perfect description of fire escapes, the basic, but it's the basic structure. What you realize when you study them is they have a basic arrangement. It should be something like this, which each level, usually they'd be near windows, but not always, sometimes doors. I'm gonna draw this really simply to save time. But you know, there'd be a window that you could open or slide up or whatever, and you'd get out onto the landing. And then what would happen is they have, um, I'm drawing it transparently on purpose. 
They have the metal rail metal sidebars. And they have a series of steps. And even these would be made of little, I'm not drawing them too much here, I'm just suggesting it. Each step, to sa it's all to save weight. They would themselves be made of bars, but enough that you wouldn't fall through between them. So you can see there's a cutout here and you know, you'd come out this window, the fire escapes themselves have these bars, again, to save weight and to let stuff like leaves or snow, whatever, not build up and fall through. But you don't want this incredibly heavy thing, so they had to figure out everything they could to save uh, weight. You'd step out here, and then you'd go down this uh, uh, ladder, staircase, and you'd go down, and it's basically like a spiral, because of course this continues all the way down, as many as you have. I've just showed you one unit, but it's like basically like a spiral like this, like you're you're going around, down, and around. So. You're kind of going down like that to the bottom. And of course, you also have other structural slash functional elements like a you know, whoops, railing with whatever, probably more bars like that. But And then, what have I forgotten? Well, I've forgotten, I'll put these ones on quickly. a little loose here okay you need usually there'd be um you need they'd have some kind of bracing not only where it would be attached but it would have sometimes three i think there's a huge variety of types of these but what i'm trying to sh explain here is the basic structure and function of what what's doing not just the form sometimes people like i said if you don't research they just draw something that they think is a fire escape it doesn't have any structure or function it just has the vaguest idea of form but they don't understand that to make a better drawing and more convincing with more resonance, you should study the structure and function a little bit and try and understand what it is, that uh, what, what the structure and function are and how they've been built into these things. They're not just random choices. So again, uh, railings, and then there'd be a railing here usually that projects out on, like on this, if I draw it from a side view, <clears throat> And these funny railings that are like this, um, a thing like that. But it looks like here at the bottom, these and the ones I remember, I actually don't remember if they have ones on the inside. I think they do. But they'd stop short and probably, if you think about it, just to save weight because you didn't need their, this railing to go all the way down here. You wouldn't, you'd stop holding it when you got to about this level and you'd run around and go down to the next one. So, um, that's the basic idea. And then when you get to the bottom, they'd have, uh, on the last landing, they'd have, again, this I gotta research a bit more, but the basic idea is that they have some kind of ladder, a drop ladder, that I think the first part would be fixed. But as you got near the street, um, like say someone up here, that this is the street level down here. You don't want someone to be able to get the ladder. So they had it on a slide that you couldn't jump up and grab. But the people here, I don't actually even know the activation mechanism because I've never lived in a building with a fire escape, but it slides, it's mounted on rails and you can slide down it, and it drops down to the ground level. But it's optional that the people in the building can, can do it. You don't want a burglar or somebody, you know, just grabbing your ladder and going up in your building. The main point of this is not to be a super nerd about each of these things. It's the main plea is to put some structure and function into your drawings. And that's what makes a convincing drawing for a background or a design. It's not really just the sheer rendering or depiction of it, the representation of it. The charm comes in, the combination of elements and the charm comes in a believability. I've often mentioned the appeal of people like Hayao Miyazaki and many others, like the classic Disney movies were like this too. I think of uh, 101 Dalmatians. 
one of the key designers for the backgrounds is a man called Ken Anderson. You can see they clearly thought about structure and function, not just form, but they did it in elegant line drawings. But they just didn't make up like random crap and throw it at the viewer. They, they made it in a believable way so that you could believe in the world that it actually functioned. So, you know, if you're drawing fire escapes in some cartoon way, you could exaggerate all this and do some incredible variations of the details. But if you build in the structure in the first place, that's what gives it the believability. And then you could play all kinds of variations. You could do elaborate types of details. You know, you could do the railings in some kind of more elaborate way or add in other maybe, you know, features to make it um, a certain type of style, whether it's sort of a steampunk thing or a fairy tale kind of thing. But if you think about these these things, uh, very beginning screen, form, function, and structure, try and think of all three as you draw, then I think you'll be further ahead. So that's it for now. Thanks for listening, and uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, anything else you can think of, and I'll see you in the next video.